So today we'll be speaking, the focus of our conversation will be on um, people that I think people that want to change career and pivot into evaluation profession or um, those that just graduated, maybe from BSc um, or completed a master's program and want to be part of um, the profession, the evaluation profession. Um, that's what will be our focus today. And I'll be speaking about some things we need to, you need to consider. I mean, when taking this um, decision, these things are not um, in certain order. You need to think about um, how you want to mix match because people's case, your case is different from another person's case. So we would not be able to address individual cases with what I'm speaking about. And again, caveat, I am sharing this based on my own experience, 14th year working in this field or in this line, um, and also looking at other evaluators from Africa, from Europe, from America, um, how they have evolved into becoming um, an evaluator and, and perhaps maybe being, being fulfilled um, in the area of, uh, in any area of evaluation. So um, yes, I, I mentioned that it is important that you prepare your CV and cover letter. And I, I don't think this, I don't think this is a no brainer for, for anyone. If you're finishing your higher education, um, I mean, first thing that comes to you is, okay, I need to get a CV or a cover letter. Um, doesn't necessarily, so uh, like I said, some things are, are not like, so these are not like steps, but you need to keep that because you are in control of that. You need to have that. Um, even myself, I, have, I still have a, I have a CV or you call it a resume at this moment. So, uh, but as somebody that is imagine you want to keep a CV, you want to keep a cover letter. Um, if you're just graduating, you shouldn't have, um, maybe what you need to have is um, a one page CV. And I'm going to, um, so if you would watch this video on YouTube, when we share the video, we will post some templates CV of somebody that is just starting out um, on the YouTube channel. I won't have time to show us or share that with us here. Um, so CV is very important. Uh, and I mean, when I say CV, maybe one page, what is most important that I see or that I have known um, and from, from even reviewing over 1,000 people that have applied at different cases for different things, either you want to conduct evaluation, either you want to join a team. I, I think it is to note that you need to tailor your CV to meet the objectives of what was requested for. If they are looking for, if an organization is looking for, okay, somebody who have experience in data collection, one, one to two years experience in data collection in the area of, um, let's say gender, um, um, let's say gender, uh, let's say gender or, or in the area of basic education, for example, you need to tailor what you have done. Even if it's two things you want to put inside your CV, it should meet that requirement. It's very, very important. Don't just send your CV, one CV, that you send to every other person. You need to look at the, the objective of who's recruiting, why they are recruiting, and be able to answer um, that requirement. Let us speak to that requirement. Cover letters, of course, cover letters, you want to differentiate yourself from every other person you might be considering, like awards, because then you're just coming out from maybe the university awards, uh, where you participated, associations you participated, if you have volunteered anywhere, which will come to my next point, 
if you have volunteered anywhere, it is important for you to state what you did during that period. And I always tell people that uh, one thing that might be useful, don't just volunteer in any organization that would not provide a reference letter to you. Um, let them provide reference letter, and which covers, yes, the duration, the activities that you did while volunteering. Some of us had volunteered one year, two years, three years. Um, but I mean, you have something to show for it, like, because at times volunteering work is like doing real work. It's just, it might just be that you are not being paid for that work. So it's important that your volunteering experience, you put it, um, if your CV and cover letter, what you've done is not enough, request, look, look out for organizations that does evaluation, conducts evaluation, write to their email address uh, in form of a cover note that, oh, you would like to volunteer that without being, being paid, right? Um, because you must have your own goal, like you just need to learn and get even if it's one year experience, because that's mm -hmm. where you start. You must start. From well, so, well, right? so it's important um, to get voluntary experience while you're waiting for the real job to come. Um, I think that is super, super important. And also because coming out of the university is different from the office space experience uh, or the office doing real work experience. So. You want to get that um, working in an office environment kind of a thing, or even if it's remote, you want to know how organizations work, how consulting firms work, how nonprofit sector works. And I mean, you can volunteer in the nonprofit space because I mean, it's also in the development sector. Um, so you, you might also want to consider that while doing that, please establish relationships in those places you are volunteering or, 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 or spending your time, your free time. Uh, and I mean, what I mean by this is getting to know your, your bosses, the person you, uh, the person you, um, you respond to, the person you, um, that looks after you is very, very important. And when I say establish relationships, it's not relationships just within the office space. Try and have informal gatherings outside. I know as Africans, yes, we do parties. I mean, we do parties. Uh, you have christening, you have wedding ceremonies, you have burial ceremonies, you have birthday ceremonies. Try and hang out with these people because that is where you actually get more information about some things they cannot speak to you within the office space. So please establish relationships. Could also be external relationships if you are lucky and you're volunteering with, a, with an organization outside of your country. Um, yes, that is possible. You can actually volunteer outside of your country. Um, then as you're establishing relationships, find somebody you can always speak to like a mentor. It could be that first person uh, who's your uh, boss when you're volunteering. Um, you could look out for every other uh, thought leaders, people that are actually doing one or two things around evaluation. When you go to LinkedIn, I mean, your LinkedIn, um, and I wanted to say something, it is very important. This four state CV and cover letter, get a LinkedIn page. Please get a LinkedIn profile. I'm not talking about Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter. Get a LinkedIn profile because that is where you will get organizations you can volunteer with, people you can establish relationships with in this field, um, people where you can get mentors in this field is on LinkedIn because those professionals, I mean, they use their LinkedIn page to connect with other people, to network, to create relationships also. So please do well to create a LinkedIn profile. I hope I'm not advertising for LinkedIn today. 
Uh, but that is the fact, that is our reality at this time. You know, before you don't know people, but with LinkedIn, it's easier for you to just search evaluation. So that there's one thing on LinkedIn, for example, if you want to be an evaluation officer or monitor and evaluation officer, you can search on LinkedIn, just put monitor and evaluation officer, and it brings you, it gives you all the people working in that field. Those are the people you want to look up to. Those are the people you want to start thinking of asking questions from. Um, it's a matter of getting the attention, right? Getting the attention. And this is part of establishing relationships. Let me tell you one way of getting their attention. Now, relationships establishment is in two ways. So each party wants to benefit. Um, so the person, your, your mentor, wants to benefit, you yourself as mentee wants to benefit. So it's a win-win kind of a thing. One way to do it is to comment on some of their blog posts, some of their reports they've written, make comments based on what you think. How, I mean, that's one way to do it. Like, oh, I just read about X, Y, Z that you mentioned. I think personally from my little experience that X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah happens. And you think like, this is the way things can go. With that, the person feels, oh, this person has read my post, which is one of the reasons the person did that at first, for people to read and make comments or insights. Um, that's a good way. After making that comment, you might find other opportunities to also chat. And before you know it, you are already creating relationships with the person after five, six instances, you then start stating where you are in your life and where you want to move into. This is also the same thing with finding an organization to volunteer with. It's the same thing also. That's one way actually you can use. Um, then you get into the first ladder as an enumerator. I think this is, this is the first, um, this is how people get their first experience um, in the evaluation field. I mean, I also started as an enumerator. I think that should be like 10 years ago. So um, where the only thing I do is go to the field, collect data. Um, I've worked in all the 36 states and the federal capital territory in Nigeria, being an enumerator, right? It's like somebody collecting data from different um, communities. So that is, that is where you might want to start. And I think that is where you should make your first landing points in the sector because what this also makes you understand is that by the time you move up the ladder again you then know and understand how to manage data collection from a smaller size data collection to a large size if you think about nigeria the largest country in africa how you can collect data from all uh, the 36 states of the country. So being an enumerator will give you that um, knowledge, um, which is very important. Um, I also mentioned, and I am and thinking that by the time you become an enumerator, um, maybe you would have had some money to save, right? Um, you can think about joining community of practices. I've mentioned several of them. Um, in this, I've, I've mentioned se several of them in this brown bag. Um, so there is the um, Africa Evaluation Association, which is the overall body for, um, uh, overall professional association for evaluators in Africa, afria.org. Uh, my colleagues can type the, uh, the, the page into the chat box. They have a membership. So members tab, you can check all the members. Uh, so your country have an association for evaluators. Um, I know of Nigeria, Nigeria Association of Evaluators. I know of South Africa, Samia. I know Kenya also have um, forgotten Kenya Evaluation Society. Um, and, and a couple of them, but I mean, and, and also Ghana also have, uh, Senegal has. If you cannot find an evaluation 
a session in your country, start one. Um, and as, a, as an Imagine evaluator, I think that, so there's also the Young Imagine evaluators, which is connected to evaluates.org. So um, is, a, is a part of Eval Partners, Evaluates. Evaluates serves as the global body for young emerging evaluators. If you do not have YEEs, that's what we call them. If you don't have in your country, start one. Yes, start one because it's not available. You start your own um, and ask your mentors to guide you on how to proceed. And that's, that's how it works. So you can, you can, Nigeria has the Nigerian Association of Evaluators. Um, and I think it's nigeriaevaluators.org. I'm also going to post in the YouTube channel all the uh, link to some of this community of practice. So when you check the YouTube page at the comment box, you will see the community of practices you can join. Um, I also, so, I mean, once you join those, you are also um, expanding your network. That is what it means. And please, when you join, do not hesitate to post what you're doing or what you can do or take a volunteering position in those community of practice. So for example, I personally, I, um, I was part of the electoral committee for, um, for the African Evaluation Association um, last year. Uh, for Nigeria Association of Evaluators, yes, I'm a volunteer um, online, so I volunteered to create an online platform for the association. Um, I also volunteered to be part of the uh, current caretaker committee as well. For the American Evaluation Association, which I'm also a member of, I'm one of those reviewing uh, proposals for this year conference. So we don't just do this. We, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can think about, okay, you have the uh, capacity to do it, but I mean, it's also to expand your network and your horizon because that is how you, uh, that is how you, you grow in the field. So it's important. And with that, you need to continuously invest in yourself, which is trainings, training, keep on going for trainings, and um, there's so many trainings that Clones House um, have designed, especially for young people, basic evaluation course. Um, there are also some free trainings as well. My colleagues can post in the chat box some of those courses, especially the basic evaluation course. We have another course at the end of this month which is designing monitoring and evaluation plans. I mean, those are courses. And I mean, you joining those community of practice would also open you to so many trainings on monitoring and evaluation. Um, so invest in yourself is very important, which is training. If you think you have had enough experience, you can think about, there are some master's program also in evaluation. I, I think I've shared that. There was one topic in particular based on that like where you can get further education in evaluation. Um, investing in yourself should be continuous at every stage because that is, so it's like a car without a fuel. So um, a car does not run on one lifetime fuel. So you need to refuel yourself. And that is why you need to also invest in yourself at every stage. Um, and I mean, then you become, so I'm going to go back to enumerator, you become an, after, I mean, doing one, two years of enumeration, of being an enumerator, then you become an enumeration manager, which means you are managing 10 to 15 enumerators, hundreds of enumerators um, that you want to manage. When you get some experience there, you then turn into um, analyzing those data that are collected by, by enumerators. And what data being a data analyst then means is that, yes, you know everything that might go wrong in the field. And you as a data analyst, you already know how to manage that. Some people then grow up to become um, a report writer. So like writing 
evaluation reports for the moving to proposal writing. So writing evaluation proposals, of course, you can't be part of a proposal writing team without understanding some parts of eval some um, some things that are supposed to happen in an evaluation. Yes, enumeration management, uh, data management, um, client um, consultant management, um, budget management. That is, these are all parts and pieces of what you need to understand, which is at a high level. Then before you become a, an evaluation coordinator, or some people would say mail specialist and all that. But I mean, I, I'm not interested in from enumeration manager to evaluation coordinator might not be necessary for this uh, context for, for what we're talking about now. But I think what is important for imagine evaluators, I've mentioned it CV and your cover letter, very important. Don't just keep it there, create a profile on LinkedIn. That is very, very important, most important. Um, and one thing to, to look at it is if you're thinking of how do I create a profile, please look at the profile of people you look up to and create your profile in that line. Uh, most times profiles are about what you have achieved, right? If you have not achieved anything, write about what you have done and what you're aspiring to do. Um, I mentioned volunteering, yes. Um, in a space where there are limited jobs, I would rather request for a volunteer position and say, okay, for five months or seven months. We actually have people in Clones House who, who just wrote about their interest and what we have done in the past, what they've seen and why they want to volunteer with us. Some intern, some volunteer. And I know we've taken some of them. Um, so don't wait for somebody to put up a, a vacancy or so before you, what you just need to do is research company, evaluation companies, evaluation consulting firm, NGOs that you think you want to contribute to and write to them. Establish relationships. If you cannot write to their emails, find how to meet somebody in that organization. And I already told us about how to use LinkedIn, the search button on LinkedIn. You can use it to search people that are working in that field. Then get a mentor, get somebody. Um, 11, no, like 12 years ago, uh, while I was just being introduced to m and &E, I was introduced to m and &E through a mentor in a fellowship. So, um, and, 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 and that was how everything just started. So, um, and at every stage, you might need to change your mentor because you need mentors for each stage of growth, right? Uh, because experiences are different, diverse, what you might be focusing on as a concerns evaluation might be different uh, also, also as well. Um, then try and do some enumerator work, join a community of practice. I've mentioned this, very, very important. There are a whole lot of them. And then investing in yourself is very important, like continuous trainings, continuous education, 